These are examples for section 14.2, prism and cylinder surface area. Example 1. Draw and identify the cross section formed in each situation. Part A. A square pyramid intersected by a horizontal plane, a plane that's parallel to the base. Here's the base of the pyramid. We want a plane that intersects parallel to that base. We're going to take that base's sides and kind of pull out a little bit with our straight edge and draw a plane that uh, looks like it would intersect right about somewhere in the center. Goes off my page a little bit here. Like that. Now as this slices through the middle somewhere to draw the actual cross section, we line one of the sides of our plane lines here, line up with these two sides of the triangle, or the, the pyramid. So it's going to cut through here, and then it's also going to cut between here and here, like that. Then we take our straight edge, make it parallel to this, bring it up, and from this edge to this edge it cuts, bring it up some more, parallel to this, cuts here also. So here's the square that has been produced. If you were to slice this open and turn it up, you could see there would be a square, oh, about this size. So this is the cross section shaded in, and it is a square. So that's the cross section of a horizontal plane going through there. Now you notice if you went up with it, the square would get smaller. If you move the plane down, the square would obviously get larger. Part B. We want to see what cross sections formed by a cone intersected by a vertical plane. So a vertical plane going this way. So to draw it on here, this is a little trick here. We draw vertical lines or vertical segments that represent a piece of our plane about like that and then much like this plane here we need an angle come over here like this and we're going to cut this plane cut, using this plane we're going to cut now this is a little trick here it cuts through right about here. What we have to be careful with is this triangle has to go through from here to here but parallel to this side right here. So so here's the triangle is produced right here. So if we took one piece off and looked straight straight on, we would see a triangle that would look something like this. And shade it in. So triangle. And the triangle is the cross section of a cone with a vertical plane slicing it. Of course, if we moved it further up or further back, that triangle is going to get smaller as it comes this way and smaller as it goes that way. Example 2. Draw and identify the three-dimensional solid generated by rotating or the revolution of the given triangle on the graph. About the x-axis. So we, what do we want to do is take this triangle right here. And we want to rotate it about the x-axis. So it's going to go around the x-axis in this direction. So what we do is we take every point on the triangle and we reflect it over the axis uh, of rotation. 
back when we did reflections, you'll remember that we went the same distance perpendicular on the opposite side. So for instance, this point right here gets reflected, since it's three units up, it gets reflected three units down perpendicular to the line of, of rotation or reflection in this case. Each point does the same thing until finally this point right here reflects in the same axis. So you've got an image right here. But the hard part to see without animation is that every point gets rotated around. So there's points all the way around this way and then all the way back. So each point is each point of that triangle is going this way but it's also going this way. So we end up with a cone. Now the video that you watched in the lesson really helps you see what's going on a lot better than drawing it on a two-dimensional sheet of paper, but you need to know how to draw it on a two-dimensional sheet of paper, and there's our cone. And so we, they asked us to state the dimensions of this newly generated solid. So we're going to go ahead and state, let's see, a cone has a circular base, and so we need radius. It's a cone with radius, or R equals, we start from the center, and we go out to either that point or that point, so that's three units. So the radius is three units. Then we'll need the height. We always need a height of a cone. We start where we, right at the origin here, where it started. And we count to the left up to this top point here, the vertex point. So we, from here over to here, that would be four units. One, two, three, four. So the height of this cone is four, four units. So H is four units. Now, with this one, pause the video and do exactly the same thing except this time revolve it or rotate it around the y-axis in the same manner and then go ahead and write your dimensions. Okay, so when you do that you're going to get this part of the triangle right here, this part of the right triangle is going to be reflected over across the y-axis each and every point, four units this way, so four units this way and then back up to this point. And then, since it's rotating around, this is going this way, and this goes this way, so you have to kind of hand draw that. And so you have a much flatter cone than the one we had a while ago. And this time, the cone with radius, or R, Starting from the center out to the edge of the cone there, edge of the circle, that's one, two, three, four. So four units. And the height would be from the center up to the vertex point, so that's three. So the height is three units. It's kind of the reverse of what this one was. Now we did example three and the second part of example two. So this one's taken care of. This was just simply going across the y-axis. Now for some measurement. Example 4. What is the lateral and total surface area of the prism below? Now one thing about prisms or rectangular prisms or square prisms is that we have to designate the base. We're used to seeing bases at the bottom so we're just going to go ahead and, and state that this is our base or one of our bases. Prisms have two bases. This would be the other one parallel to it on the opposite side. But you need to understand that we could have done it a different way. We could have said that okay this is the base and this is the other base and used all these others as lateral sides. So you have to decide that first in any rectangular prism. Other prisms you don't have to do that with. Okay, so what is the lateral and total surface area of the prism? We're going to start with the lateral area first, and then we're going to go to the total surface area. So starting with the lateral area, LA, by the formula you learned is pH, P for perimeter, H for the height of the prism. 
And so we go ahead and define our variables. We have height, a height of our, since this is our base, one of our bases, our height is going to be 5. Height of the prism, 5 centimeters. Then for our perimeter, the perimeter of the base, that's what that P stands for in this formula. So we take one of their bases and we want to find the perimeter of one of the bases. Well, this is a rectangle, and so the perimeter formula is 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. So I have my length and width are here and here. These are also base and height. And so we substitute those in, we get 2 times the length, which is 4, plus 2 times the width, which is 3. And so P is 2 times 4 is 8, plus 2 times 3 is 6, and so our perimeter is 14 centimeters. Now we've got both our dimensions. Substitute them in here. So the lateral area, remember the lateral area is only the area of all the side faces, or side, you know, the side faces, not the two bases. It's interesting, we use the base to find it, but the actual area is just on the sides. So we get P, which is 14 centimeters, times H, which is 5 centimeters. So our lateral surface area is 14 times 5, or 70 square centimeters. Now for our total surface area, SA, the formula for that is you take the lateral surface area, which we've already found, and you add two times uppercase letter B, which is from our notes, you know that stands for the area of the base face. And in this case, it's a rectangle. So rectangle is the base face area. So defining our variables, for one thing, we already have LA, so we can go ahead and substitute that in. So the total surface area is the lateral surface area, 70, plus, and then our base is the area formula for a rectangle. These are perpendicular, the 3 and the 4, in a two-dimensional plane. And so that would be base times height. Remember, this is a rectangle area. Base, we use 4 centimeters times height, which is 3 centimeters. And of course, that gives us 12 square centimeters. So now, again, our LA was 70 square centimeters. So we have both our dimensions that we need right here. We plug them in here, 70 plus 2 times B which is 12. So, I'm going to go ahead and put the centimeters in there. We have 70 square centimeters plus 2 times 12 square centimeters, which gives us 24 square centimeters. And so our surface area, our total surface area is 70 square centimeters plus 24 square centimeters is 94 square centimeters. There's our total surface area, all the surface area around the entire thing, lateral surface area, everything except for the two bases. Example 5. What is the lateral and total surface area of the prism below? Exact same instructions as example 4, except this time, instead of a rectangular prism, we have a triangular prism, a triangular base, and it happens to be a right triangle, which helps us out with our base and height, since they have to be perpendicular. So we're going to start with our lateral, and then we'll go to our total, number two. So number one, our lateral is, again, LA equals PH, P perimeter of one of the bases, base faces, and H, the height of the prism itself. So the height of the prism is six, from base to base. So we have height equals six centimeters. And our perimeter, the perimeter of a base, means that we need to add all three sides. Now, there's not an official necessarily formula for this, but we'll just set, call this side one, side two, and side three. So we have side one plus side two plus side three. Pretty simple all the way around. Well, so we have 
side 1, which we'll get to in a moment, plus side 2, which is 3, plus side 4, which is 4. We don't have this, and we can find it. Since this is a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean Theorem. So down here, by Pythagorean Theorem, starting with the hypotenuse, which is this side right here, I'll call it S1 squared equals one of the legs squared plus the other leg squared right triangle so the side we're looking for squared is 3 squared is 9 plus 4 squared is 16 so the first side squared is 25 take the square root because we would just want the side not the squared of it and so we get the side one is 5 so we take this and we're going to put it in here we have 5 now, plus 3, plus 4. The perimeter of the base face, or one of the base faces, is 5 plus 3 is 8, plus 4 is 12. And that's in centimeters. So now we have everything we need. We have perimeter, we have height. So we plug it into the lateral area. We have perimeter, which is 12 centimeters times the height which is six centimeters multiplying those together of course we're going to get centimeters times centimeters to centimeters squared 12 times 6 then gives us 72 so 72 square centimeters is the area of all three of these lateral faces not including these two bases now for number two the total surface area SA that again the formula is LA the lateral surface area plus two times the area of the base space in this case it's a triangle as we've discussed and so we need to start plugging in our values our lateral surface area is 72 we've already got that plus two times a uh, big B is of course will come down here big B is the area of the base face so since it's a triangle it's one half little b little h one half base times height and so one half times the base now the base and height of the triangle are in two dimensions this is flat plane here we've got this base is perpendicular to the height so three for the base times height which is four we can take the half of 4, so 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 4 twice, and now we have the base face area is 1 times 3 times 2, or 3 times 2, which is 6. So the base area, the area of the base face, one of them, is 6 square centimeters. We already have our lateral area, 72 square centimeters, and so we have both our dimensions together here. There's the 72 plus 2 times the base face, which was 6 square centimeters. So the total surface area is 72 plus 2 times 6. Or excuse me, yeah, 2 times 6, which gives us 12. And so our total surface area is 72 plus 12, or 84 square centimeters surface area of the whole thing, all three lateral sides, top and bottom. Example 6. Use the provided net to find the surface area, so that implies total surface area, of the hexagonal prism below. So here's the net right here. Uh, the solid for it is, I've drawn it down here, we're going to primarily use the net. We're going to use the formula for the total surface area of a prism, whether it's no matter what kind of prism it is. This has a hexagonal base or hexagon base. So our surface area formula is SA equal LA, the lateral surface area, plus 2 times the area of the base face which in this case would be the regular polygon that's a hexagon there's one there and of course there's one right here also and so <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and do lateral area at the same time we do 
the bases. So lateral area, according to our formula, is pH. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute that in here. So the surface area total is the lateral surface area or perimeter of the one of the base faces times the height of the prism plus two times the area of one of the base faces. So we can use this now. Let's go ahead and define our variables for our pH or our lateral. We have a height of the prism connects the two bases. It would be this six centimeters here. Then we have our perimeter, the perimeter all the way around one of the base faces. Well, as you know, a regular polygon has a perimeter formula, which is n times s, where n is the number of sides, which is 6. So p equals 6 times the length of one of those six sides. And they give that right here, which is 7 centimeters. And calculating that, 6 times 7 centimeters is 42 centimeters. So our perimeter is 42. Now we have everything we need for our lateral to put in here. Then let's find out what our base area is. So we come down here for our base. And the big B here is the area formula for a regular hexagon or regular polygon which is one half times the apothem times the perimeter. Well we've already found the perimeter so we can substitute that in pretty immediately. Big B is equal to one half times the apothem and then give us the apothem right here which is 6.1 centimeters times the perimeter which we just found times 42 centimeters. So to find the area of the base we can take one half of this factor 42 and get rid of the one half. 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 42 21 times. Now we have 6.1 times 21 and so the area of one of our base faces, this hexagon, would be 128.1 square centimeters. Now we have what we need for our, our base. Now we can use the information here. We come back over here, the surface area is equal to P, which is 42, times the height of the, of the prism itself, which is 6, plus 2 times the area of one of the bases, which we found to be 128.1 centimeters. Using the order of operations, we multiply first here and here before we add. That gives us 252 plus... 2 times 128.1 is 256.2. And so the surface area, the total surface area of this entire uh, regular hexagonal prism, it's also right here, it gives us 508.2 square centimeters. If you were to wrap this up like a Christmas present and with no overlapping, this is how much paper it would take to wrap it. Example 7. Now on to cylinders. The diameter of, <clears throat> of the base of a cylinder is 8 inches and its height is 6 inches. What is the total surface area of the cylinder in terms of pi, so the exact answer, and approximated to the nearest square inch, one's place? So this time they gave us a, a diagram of a cylinder but they didn't label anything so let's go ahead and label. We have a diameter of 8 inches. They're showing the radius, so we need to complete that to show the diameter, since that's what they gave us. I'm going to put the diameter right above the center, 8 inches. Then we have our height of 6 inches. That's the height of the cylinder. I'll come right over here. This is 6 inches this way. Okay, so finding the total surface area of a cylinder that would be the lateral surface area of a cylinder, LA, plus two times the area of the base face, which this time is a circle. Notice the formula is exactly the same. The general formula is exactly the same as for the formula of any prism surface area. But it gets a lot different from here, as you know. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and find out 
go ahead and write what the lateral surface area is. That's 2 times pi times the radius times the height plus 2 times the area of the base. This is a circle, circular base, and so the area formula for a circle is pi r squared. So big B is pi r squared. And so 2 times pi r squared. Now we can use this formula and directly substitute in all our variables. Well, our diameter was 8 inches. So our radius, of course, is half that. Divide that by 2, and the radius is 4 inches. So we have what we need here. And, of course, the height was 6 inches. And so we start substituting in very carefully 2 times pi, leave pi in, all the way down to the very end, times r, which is 4, 4 inches, times the height, which is 6, plus 2 times pi, times r, which is 4, squared, the plug-in step. So the total surface area, notice we have two terms here separated by a plus sign. Here's the first term, here's the second term. I can go ahead and multiply the 2, the 4, and the 6 all together at once if I want to. So I do that and I get 48 pi plus, I still need to square that, that's 2 pi times 4 squared is 16. So the surface area is 48 pi plus 2 times 16 is 32 pi. Pi's are like variables. You can add terms just like with pi's in them just like you do with x or y. So we have 48 pi plus 32 pi and that gives us 80 pi. We have 80 pi square inches and that's our exact surface area. That's what would cover the top, the bottom, and all the way around the curve of the side of the lateral part of the cylinder. We're also asked for the approximation, so we find the approximation, take your calculator, put in 80 times second pi, enter, and you should get, rounded to the nearest square inch, 251 square inches. Example 8. <clears throat> You're using a cylindrical stencil roller at the right, or right below I guess, to paint patterns on your floor. So you've got a paint roller basically and you start rolling it. So you can imagine it rolling. It's going to leave a trail of paint. And I want and notice that this circle here, as you start rolling it, that circle kind of gets unwound. And so this right here is part of our circumference from the circle. Anyway, what exact and approximate area does the roller cover in th three full terms or turns or revolutions? So, first of all, we need to figure out whether we're going to use lateral or total surface area here. We're going to use lateral since the only part of the, of the roller that's touching with the paint is on the lateral part of the cylinder. These two ends will never touch the, the floor. So we're using lateral surface area. So the formula for the lateral surface area of a cylinder is 2 times the pi times the radius times the height, the height of the actual cylinder. But we're going to be turning it around three times. So every time we go one full rotation, it has caused us to, to, to put down exactly one lateral surface area and with the next two we need to multiply by three three turns or three revolutions so we have LA is equal to 6 pi RH then R the radius this is the diameter from end to end is 2.5 inches so since that's 2.5 inches the radius would be divided by 2 And when we do that, we get 1.25 or one and a quarter inches for our radius. The height, of course, is from base to base, and that 
is six inches right here. Now we have what we need and we come over here and substitute it in. So the lateral area where it turns three times is six times pi times the radius which is 1.25 times six, six inches. Since this is one big term, everything's being multiplied together, I'm going to multiply all the numerical parts and leave pi. So 6 times 6 times 1.25 will give us 45 pi, and this is in square inches. This is the exact amount of paint that's going to be laid down after three revolutions or full turns of that stencil roller. We also want the approximation, so we Put in 45 times pi in our calculator and we get approximately 141 square inches of paint is being left on the floor in three turns.